and welcome to my channel The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro Herrera and today I'm going to be reviewing a book that's called Vanity Fair, a novel without a hero. It was published in 1847-1848 and it was written by William Maypeace Thackeray. And when it was first published, Vanity Fair really shocked people because it came out during the Victorian era. They weren't used to having their characters embody the seven deadly scenes with such perfection. For example, people all of the time were more accustomed to Charles Dickens and Dickens and Thackeray were literary contemporaries. I hear I am reminded that a character in Gone with the Wind, Melanie Wilkes, remarks that she thinks that Thackeray is a cynic in comparison to Dickens. I like both of them, I couldn't choose. But in any case, Vanity Fair is a classic and with time people have come to really admire its characters, the way it is written, the story it presents, and I'm glad to be counted among the ranks of its fans. Vanity Fair has been adapted many times into films and radio and television and today I'm going to be reviewing two of its adaptations, the 1998 TV series by the BBC and the 2004 film. The TV series starts Natasha Little as Becky Sharp, the protagonist. It also has Frances Gray, Philip Glenister, Anton Lesser, David Bradley, Miriam Mar Goyles, among others. While the 2004 version starts Reese Witherspoon as Becky Sharp and the cast is followed by Romola Garay, Ellen Atkins, Jim Broadbent, Gabriel Byrne, Bob Hoskins, Race Ethans, James Purefoy, Jonathan Rhys Meyers, and Natasha Little, who played Becky in the 1998 version, appears here in a Minor role. And before I begin, let me just say that this will be a video without spoilers. I was first introduced to Vanity Fair when I was about 11 or 12. I went to the movie theater with my sister and on comes this trailer for the 2004 version. I really liked it. It had England, period drama, it had the protagonist of Legally Blonde and it showed love and war, beautiful costumes and settings. So I was sold. When I finally watched the movie sometime later I was not disappointed. It did meet my expectations and I thought it was a lovely story. And I remember that I made my best friend watch it and we fool around quoting phrases from the movie to each other, for example hoity toity less fastidious if you please or diddle diddle darling or light up your lantern jaws anyways when I was 15 I finally bought the book and read it and now 10 years later I've read it so many times that it's practically falling apart yep and then finally I saw the 1998 TV version and I also really liked it I can compare which one I prefer the film or the TV series both of them are very unique show different aspects of the story so I like them both and that's why I'm gonna be talking about it I think that I also like Vanity Fair because in the same year that the 2004 movie came out this really famous Mexican soap opera also came out it's called Ruby and it has a really similar plot to Vanity Fair Vanity Fair a novel without a hero is the story of two girls, Becky Sharp and Amelia Setley. They start the novel as friends and then they part ways and we follow them through life's hardships and joys and throughout the novel they meet occasionally. The book isn't really about their friendship, but rather it contrasts the two women and how they cope with the situations that present themselves. The real star of the show is Rebecca, or Becky. She is the anti-hero from the novel's title. And she's a beautiful, cunning, ruthless, young woman who wants to desperately escape poverty and will do pretty much anything to climb up the social ladder. Whereas Amelia is really nice and sweet and a bit of a fool sometimes. I prefer Becky because I find her a way more compelling character. We also get to know the men who fall in love with Becky and Amelia. And my favorite men in the book are called Rodden Crawley and William Dobbin. They both love them so much that they're willing to sacrifice anything for them and then we see the consequences of this and it does for some pretty entertaining reading. And I want to say that Dobbin's love story, the author based some of his real life experiences onto the character that mainly deal with unrequited love. Thackeray was in love with the wife of one of his friends. These are just the main storylines, but Vanity Fair really paints a vast picture of English society at the start of the 19th century. And the author often describes what's happening to other characters, even though they are minor ones. But whether he's describing a ball in British India, or a quiet dinner in the countryside, or whether we're meeting the King of England as someone is presented at court, or whether we're being invited to the famous Duchess of Richmond's Ball on the eve of the Battle of Waterloo, the battle which marked the end of Napoleon's reign on Europe, the reader is entranced by it all. At least that's what always happens to me. As I said at the start of the video, the seven deadly scenes are presented throughout the story in, in the characters and the situations that they encounter. And Thackeray paints English society, or more accurately, humankind, as full of vices. So yes, Lost, 
gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride appears. And while maybe some people think that this casts a sort of bleak shadow where there is no hope for the characters to meet a happy ending, and William Makepeace Thackeray presents all of this in such an entertaining way. He writes in so much detail with sarcasm and cynicism. I find this such a fascinating book as it portrays human nature. I give Vanity Fair a 5 out of 5 stars review. I think it has a really great and detailed and well-developed plot. I can remember ever encountering before a style of writing similar to the one Thackeray presents here. And I just love the way Thackeray uses some of his real-life experiences into the book. For example, he lived in India and in Paris and some of his characters live in these places. And when he was little he saw from afar Napoleon as he was being held in St. Helena. And the story deals a lot with Napoleon at the start of the book. And I also really like how the author starts presenting the novel as if it was an actual place readers should be wary of venturing into. He presents himself as the puppeteer and the characters are his puppets. Through the novel he often abandons the plot and starts giving warnings or little anecdotes as if we were actually having a conversation with him. He does it with charm and humor and wit. But I also give ben Benedict Fair a 5 out of 5 stars review because it has a lot of the elements that I look forward to in novels. For example, romance, historical dramas, England during its empire era. We also get unrequited love and I just love it when a male character falls for a woman and for some reason or other she doesn't love him back. And here we explore a lot of different ways in which these can be presented. I love how by the end of the novel many characters have learned from their mistakes. It's sort of ironic because even though some of them do get their heart's desires, they don't get it in a way that ends up being a fairy tale ending. And I thought this was a mirror of what happens in real life, even though this is presented as fiction. And finally, I think that I really love Vanity Fair because Becky Sharp is such an amazing character. To think that the author dared write a woman like her during the Victorian period is really admirable. And even though I do think that she's pretty ruthless, I can't help but admire her wittiness and her cleverness, her gumption and her ability to make the best of every circumstance that she finds herself in. I won't compare both adaptations as I said earlier, but I give both of them a 5 out of 5 stars review. This is the most faithful adaptation of the two because it is longer. It has some really good performances, particularly Natasha Little as Becky Sharp. Then its take on British life at the start of the 19th century is way more ruder than the next adaptation. This version is more visually beautiful. It has amazing costumes and I must admit that whenever I'm reading the book I always imagine the settings from the 2004 version in my mind. So it does whitewash many of the characters. It has also the most gorgeous opening credits. And as a side note, there is a scene that was deleted with Robert Pattinson. And it's kind of funny because here he appears as Reese Witherspoon's son and some years later they both appeared in Water for Elephants only then they played a couple. This is all for today's video, thank you very much for watching my review of Vanity Fair, the book and two of its adaptations. I shall keep my fingers crossed that you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you've read it, what are your thoughts on it or if now you want to read it. Have you seen the movie or the TV show? What do you think about them? In the description box below you can find links to the novel's Goodreads page to the TV series IMDb page and to the 2004 films trailer and IMDb page. Thank you once again for watching. I'm Caro Herrera, the mental traveler, and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.